Um, I appreciate the offer. I think we started talking about this when Dr. Juan and I shared a patient most recently um, talking about um, orbital and ocular metastases in your patients. And it's, it's basically come up many times. My first case that I saw of this was Tony Bedros's patient um, about, I think I've been here for seven years, so it was that first year, and it was basically an 18-year-old kid who had been treated for ALL for a long, long time, was in remission, things were good, he had already had a bone marrow transplant, life was good, and he came in and told Tony that, you know, I've had vision loss for the last um, couple weeks, and Tony called me up and I took him on, um, and of course the first thing we saw was a severely infiltrated optic nerve. So we had an optic nerve that was full of leukemic infiltrates. Of course, then he was back into, um, you know, chemo and everything. And of course, uh, optic nerve is a CNS site. So it started a whole new course of treatment for this kid. And he's actually done really well, but he remained uh, with catastrophic vision loss to that eye. Once it was completely infiltrated, we could not get that axon of fibers to, to send those messages back to the brain anymore. So that was one of the first cases we had here at Loma Linda, which we were able to really diagnose a kid that had come out of remission based on their visual findings. Um, today we're going to just talk about a few cases, um, some of which um, you guys might have shared with me and other of your colleagues. Um, basically, here's a 47-year-old woman who basically comes in and says that she's got binocular horizontal diplopia. So she sees images, both eyes open, right next door neighbors. Um, it's painless, but it keeps getting worse, and she just feels like she's also a little bit nauseated. So that's been going on for a couple months. Now you'll have to, this is definitely more your world than mine, so her past medical history from what she told me was a bilateral mastectomy, chemo and radiation a couple, a few years ago, and she's been on tamoxifen ever since. Her vision is 2050. She has a history of amblyopia, meaning that she's never really, her, her visual pathways never progressed and never developed normally on the right side. So 2050 is her best vision on the right. 2020 is her left. And basically what happens is when you look straight ahead at her, she's crossing. And when she goes towards the left, she crosses even more. And here you can see a picture of her. So here she is in your clinic. And, um, Hey, come on in. Nice oh, to see you, sir. That's not good. Well, we just got started. We're talking about a case of a patient who basically has double vision and has a history of breast cancer, status post mastectomy. Mm -hmm. So here she is when she comes to my clinic. She's 47. Um, had three years. Uh, uh, three years ago, had a mastectomy, chemo, and radiation. She's crossed when I look at her, and when she looks towards the left, you can see that her left eye um, does not go. It does not come. Does not a uh, AB ducked it all. Hey, how are you? Um, so basically, essentially, when she tries to look to the left, she can't move her eye. And um, when she looks to the right, you can see she fully is able to do that. So she's got a very significant esotropia here, which we consider a left six nerve palsy in a patient with a history of breast cancer. So whenever we see that, the first thing I do is we get the MRI, which we did stat that day, compliments of Loma Linda. And um, here she's got a huge pontine metastasis also on the left side, which explains the left six nerve palsy. And she also, you can't see it here because I didn't include all the cuts or we'd be here for a year. Um, she also has a cavitary lesion through her cerebellum there as well. So she might have been a patient who, if she didn't have the pontine met that gave her the six nerve palsy, she might have presented with, um, you know, new nystagmus. She might have presented with um, uh, one patient I had with lung cancer just recently um, is a child abuse attorney, and she has been, uh, you know, she's wet 3B, and she's got, um, she came in with basically oscillopsia. So she did have a cerebellar lesion. We didn't know that at the time, but she felt like everywhere she looked, her, the room was jumping. And so unfortunately, we diagnosed her with new cerebellar meds. Um, so that's that patient. Another case, 78-year-old woman. Again, she just happens to be complaining of double vision as well. Um, she feels like it's worse when she looks to the left for the last six months, but she also feels like her left lid is kind of coming down. Now she's 78 years old. You might just think that that's just, well, you know, she's totic. She's older. It's not that surprising to have droopy lids when you're older. 
Um, of note that she did have breast cancer. It was diagnosed a few years ago. She had a right radical mastectomy. She had lymph node dissection. She had chemo, radiation. But there was some question about why her tumor marker was going up, and no one seemed to know, frankly. So when she came to me, she also talked.